Hi, this is Miss Linton and these wonderful honors biologists, say hi. Woo! Oh, nice. Are here for the review over chapter 32. I want to preface my discussion with you by speaking specifically to the members of period two. So hear me. Period two, we got up through, but not including um, um, tactile communication. Mm -hmm. So you will not have a question on tactile communication because we did, you're my only class where I didn't finish that. That would include like the B dance. So when I get to that part, don't stress about it, okay? Ah. All right, you cannot see because I have the screen frozen. Silly, silly. Silly, Litton. Okay, so the first thing I would do in my group shared notes is I would make like a column and I would have what is evidence that our behavior is genetic and what is evidence that our behavior um, is learned, okay? And could you come up with different experiments to do that? Yes. All right, could you do that? Yeah. yeah. All right, let's do it. Okay, so behavior, is it genetic or is it learned? Okay, so come up with some from our notes that you remember. What was one of the genetic pieces of evidence? Because you reviewed this and you're all ready to go. Superstars. Lovebirds. Okay, the lovebirds. What did the lovebirds, what were they doing? Building what? Nests. Building nests. Okay, do you remember when the lovebirds were doing the nests? One got a bunch of short ones and tucked it in their tail feathers, and the other one did long ones, carried it in the beak, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, but then when they mated the two different ones, remember they didn't cut long, they didn't cut short, they call it, cut what? Intermediate, okay? That intermediate cut length showed that it was in your DNA. It was a mixture of those two, okay? Um, what was another experiment to show that it was genetic? Snakes. Snakes. <laughs> Slug snakes. Yes, snakes and slug preference. Okay, so um, some like the slugs, the coastal ones did, right? Mm -hmm. And the inland ones didn't like slugs. So that why? Why do you prefer it? And why was it? It's because they didn't do enough tongue flicks, so tongue they couldn't flicks. taste them. Couldn't taste it. And so the evidence that it was in the DNA is they met, they married. They made it a coastal, had a little ceremony, it was really quick, but they didn't have a place to put the ring. They married the coastal snake with the inland, what are you eating? Maybe I want that. Coastal snake with the, she's like, there it is, inland snake, and they had what? It's the same word again. What, how many? Intermediate. Intermediate amount of tongue flex. Very good. Okay, give me another study. Oh, the eggs, the aplysia. Oh, yeah. I think I just misspelled it. It's a water slug. Um, I don't know what I'm spelling there. And egg laying. Okay, she was doing a hand motion. What did they give the aplysia? Tell. Estrogen shots. Well, an egg laying shot, not oh. estrogen, but that's good. <laughs> Egg laying hormone, and so even though it had mated, and even though it was gonna lay a million eggs and none of them were gonna be fertilized, even though it didn't have that, it still laid eggs, okay? So if your genes tell you to make that protein, you'll make that protein, you'll lay eggs whether you've had sex or not. Okay, give me another one. The mice. Oh, the mice. And the mothering gene, remember that? Yes. Mothering gene. That was the FOSS B gene, I believe. And so what happens is, if they had that gene and it was active, they would mother and hover and gather them all, the little baby mice up. But if they didn't have that gene, then they were like, whatever, and they'd let their baby mice wander away. Again, another piece of um, information um, that supports that it's genetic. Give me another one. Yes. Was, wasn't there like the goose that like got laid the eggs in? Like ah, ixne on the uske. There's something about that, something else, yes. Wasn't there a bird that collected blue things for its nest? Was that ah, nest? that's sexual behavior. I'm looking for something else. I look just like you because we're twins. twins. Ah. Remember the twins? Separated and they had the same exact favorite movie and some like. Now, 
Does it count as evidence when the twins are raised in the same household and they like the same stuff? No. No, if you're raised in the same household and you both like apple pie, that's because you were raised on apple pie and you were used to apple pie, right? Or you hated apple pie because you didn't like the way it was made. But if your twins raised in separate from each other, so your DNA is the same, but you weren't in the same environment, and you do the same things, marry the same kind of people, like, you know, only the red Skittles, you know, things like that, then it makes you think it must be in your DNA, okay? So those were all of our genetic pieces of evidence. Then we started talking about learning. And there was, first there was a talk about FAPs. Do you remember what FAPs were? Frequency. Sticks, action, action, action patterns. patterns. Now you're talking about your, um, um, your egg rolling, where there's some sort of sign stimulus. When it sees an egg, it rolls it in, even if you remove the egg. But it looked like some things that were fats actually got better with learning. They improved how they handled their, their fats. They, they increased on it, um, increased their accuracy, let's say if they were pecking to get their mother to do food. Um, but you can have a part of it that is instinctual, like the call for food. If mom goes quack, 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 and every time it means food, the bird needs to associate what is food to learn this is something we eat and this is something we don't eat. If you've ever babysat for a kid, what do little one-year-old and toddlers always want to do with everything they pick up? They want to put it in, in their, their mouth. mouth. And you're like, no. You know, you can have the waffle and the pancake and the cookie, but you can't eat the leaves and the dirt and the snail, right? That is learning what's That's appropriate cool. to eat, what's not appropriate to eat. So we say no or yes, that is all learning. Now, when learning is associated with a certain period of time, a fixed period of time, and there's a time when you can teach them something, what is that called as, as a mother? Yes? Is it a sensitive period? There's a sensitive period. What, what is that called? There's a certain time when I can teach, time to teach, and you will learn a song, you will learn who, who your mother is, Look for one like that if it's a mate. What is that called? Time to teach. Imprinting. Imprinting. Exactly. Okay, there's a certain time and that is imprinting. That's a key word right there, imprinting. Think about I'm making an impression on you, imprinting. That, there's a time when the father will sing their song and teach it to their offspring. Um, remember about the Go Goslings and Lorenz, and he would shake his head back and forth in front of them. And when he did that at a certain, right after they hatched, then they fixated on him and said, you are father, that was imprinting. When salmon swim back to their home stream, that is imprinting. When a baby recognizes the smell of their mother, that is imprinting. imprinting. Usually it is associated with a certain time. And birds found that when the birds were learning the song, that it was a good thing to have a tutor at a certain time when you would teach them that. Okay, then we had a bunch of other examples of learning. Um, one of the groups we had was associative learning. Associative learning. And we had two categories. Associative is I'm, uh, I'm associating one thing with another. Do you remember the two associative learnings we had? Yes. Classical conditioning. And Classical and Operon. Okay? Classical was with Pavlov's dog. And classical conditioning, you want to remember that's the B. It comes before. Okay? And it's like an innate response, like salivating for that dog food. Operon, okay, something comes after. Remember what were the words we used for operon? You would either get a what? A reward or a punishment with the rats and Skinner. So if you perform the operation, I will either give you a treat or an electric shock. Does that sound familiar? Okay, what were some other examples of imprinting we learned about? Yes? Uh, capuchin monkeys. Okay, yeah. what were they doing? What was that? Uh, it was, they had to press a button and then they get uh, a treat. Okay, that was with Skinner. Was there something else, something else? Another, yes? Yeah. That a baby treats foremost the first thing they know after. That is imprinting. What's some other learning we learned about? Yes? Isn't it cognitive learning? 
Okay, cognitive learning. What did we have under cognitive learning? Processing, yes. Imitation and insight. Imitation. So this is, I'm gonna watch, I'm gonna imitate you. You wash the sweet potatoes, I'll wash the sweet potatoes that way. Remember that? With the monkeys washing it. Okay, you said another word. What was another word you used? In insight. S-I-G-H-T. That was when, if you recall, if you did something in a new way, and the experiment they always use is monkeys stacking boxes to get bananas, but I told you a better one for insight was a a raven getting what? Meat from a string. Do you remember that? Okay. Um, what were the other learning ones did we do? Did we hit them all? Yeah. We did? Okay. So then we want to talk. Okay, so I want to just show you some things to get in your brain so you associate. So those were the lovebirds, right? And here were the snakes. Remember intermediate? The twins, right? Raised separately. Okay, a plisia and the egg lane, the mothering mouse. We talked about, um, oh, habituation. We didn't review that word. Habituation is when animals ignore, like, I don't need to be afraid of this, I don't need to run away, or I can't get the food. Remember we talked about the lion um, in the zoo? And the lion, he won't attack you because he knows he can't get you through the cage. But if he saw you out in the wild, he'd probably chase you down and eat you. So habituation, it's like you're like, Ugh, I don't need to worry about it. He doesn't have a gun. It's not hunting season. I can keep eating this food. But during hunting season, they would learn, oh, something to be afraid of. We talked about imprinting, the goslings, making sure we hit everything. Pavlov, operant, washing, raven, good. Okay. Then behavioral ecology, we started talking about um, two things. We started talking about sexual selection and what each was after. And I wanna take a minute to look at this picture right here. Okay, intersexual selection and intrasexual selection. Now, Betty choosing Joe. Why does Betty choose Joe? Do you remember the two hypotheses about why Betty would choose? What were the two hypotheses on Betty's choice? Tell me. Better fit for like survival. What is that called? There's two names. Good, good gene hypothesis. That might be why she chooses Joe. And then what, what was the other one? Good Run away. Okay. So why would Betty choose Joe? Betty would choose Joe. Good gene hypothesis would say, um, Joe is stronger, more fit. He can provide for my offspring, okay? If we did runaway hypothesis, he's running away with a trait. He has flashy feathers, he looks pretty, he looks handsome. He's running away with that particular trait. That's why Betty would choose Joe. Good gene hypothesis or runaway hypothesis. Now, let's talk about intrasexual selection. Joe and Jim are fighting, okay? They're in some sort of competition. What could they establish after their fight? They might have a territory, what else? Hierarchies. Hierarchies are usually, um, this comes about after, see how they're fighting? Some sort of competition, right? So they're gonna have a competition and um, they're gonna, as a result of that, they're gonna have maybe a territory, or a fight, or a ranking. Now, if Joe is the strongest, obviously, because he got picked, what's Joe in danger of because he's so strong? Yes? Uh, like getting like fought with because for right? territory. Right, he stuff. could get hurt because he has to defend his group, and also he requires something. What does he require more of? Tell me. Food. He requires more food. Yeah, so he could get hurt protecting his ranking, he could get hurt protecting um, his, whoever he's mating with, and he would require more food. Now, if Betty looks different than Joe or Jim, if the female looks different than the male, what is that called? Dimorphism, sexual dimorphism. So males and females, if Betty and Joe look different, okay, that would be like here, 
Betty and Joe look different. Those are all Bettys and Joes. That would be examples of sexual dimorphism. Um, here, um, Joe and Jim are fighting. They're competing. They might want to establish a territory, um, and they could end up um, getting hurt, right, as a result of that, or um, they would need a lot of food. Okay, we good on that? All right, that leads us then to sociobiology. So then, in sociobiology, we talk about organisms living together. What is the plus of living together? What could be the benefit of, sorry, what could be a benefit of living together? Tell me. You raise young. Okay, so you can help. Yep, help raise young. More eyes to look around. For Lots of people. eyes to look around. That eye is sad. Yes. Protection. Protect, because you fight together. What else would be a good help? Yeah. Teamwork. Teamwork. What were you going to say? Protecting predators. Ooh, looking for predators. Somebody like uh, eat you. Ooh, that's okay, so predator. Good. Okay. Teamwork. Good. What is the bad part of living together? What's negative about living together? Yes. Disagreements. Yep. Fights. Disagreements. Fights. Dis. Agree. Okay, what else? Yes. Parasites spread. Parasites, we get sick. Diseases. Exactly. Disease. We don't like that. What else? Yes. More food. You need more food to feed your bites. Wait. <laughs> yes. Um, the fewer overall young. Yes, fewer overall young because usually. Oh, U N G. Usually, there's just like maybe one, you know, female that's having all the babies, or one breeding pair. So, if you're still living together, then if I put these on a scale, these benefits must outweigh these costs, right? Otherwise, you wouldn't live together. Now, one of the items that comes out of living together is when one lays down their life for another, when one reduces their fitness. Let's really quickly tell me, what is the definition of fitness? What is that? Yes. Reproductive success. Repro success, that's right. Reproductive success is fitness. So why would one, now if it was true, what's that word, starts with an A? Altruism. Yeah. Altruism says you will decrease your reproductive success for another. That's what altruism says. And that word was coined because they saw, like, um, meerkats, member up on the hillside, ah, screaming, and then whoever's coming to eat them eats them, and then they don't get to pass on their genes. So, like, why would they do it? And why would they do it? Why would those meerkats sacrifice? Yeah. Because they already have children. No. <laughs> Close, but no. Yes. So they can pass down their genes. Because they can pass. Get be more specific. Who are they protecting? That's the young. The young. They're protecting their offspring. Okay. Protecting offspring. That's why they're doing it. They're looking out. That could be direct selection, or they could be protecting some relatives, and what's that called? Indirect. Uh-huh, and kin selection or indirect, exactly. So really, they're doing it for a reason. Also, there's another kind of phrase, I'll scratch your back, you scratch mine. What kind of altruism is that called? Reciprocal. Reciprocal altruism. I'll barf up some of my blood meal, um, I'm a vampire bat because I know if you, you know you would do that would you not totally you would That's share that blood milk exactly so give that right back to you so that would be reciprocal altruism questions on that part easy peasy lemon squeezy all right and the last thing last thing last thing was communication so this is the action of the sender that benefits the receiver usually. It's more than just sex. So you can break it down into the four categories. So what are the four categories we talked about? Chemical, Chemical. what was another one? Auditory. Auditory, what was another one? Visual. Visual, and what was another one? Tactile. Oops, tactile. 
so let's do this. Day, night, fast, slow, and we'll put examples underneath. Okay, chemical. Does chemical, what's an example of chemical? P. P, okay, P, perfect, P. Does it work in the day? Yes. Does it work in the night? Yes. Is yes. it fast or slow? Slow. You can't usually be slower. Okay, um, what's, one of, uh, what's one of audio? Yellow. Bird calls. Bird calls. Does it work in the day? Yes. yes. Does it work in the night? Yes. Fast or slow? Fast. Fast, fast. good. What's an example of visual? Lights. Teeth. Four. Showing teeth. Oh, Showing be be oh, oh that would be tactile. Oh, yeah. But uh, sorry, I shouldn't have done that because that's exactly what you're saying. But other kind of what else? Showing teeth, displays, what else? Uh, My colors, any kind of mating dance. Those are all visual, right? Okay, so visual could be teeth, it could be a dance that you watch. Will it work in the day? Yes. Yes, at night? No. Not usually. Not usually unless you're like a firefly or something. Is it fast or slow? Fast. Fast, because you're you. watching it, right? Yeah. Okay, tactile. What was our tactile one? The bee dance. Bee dance. Okay, does it work in the day? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, tactile will also work at night because night you're touching it. Fast or slow? Fast. Fast for whoever's right there. Yeah. Right? And for those of you who weren't here for the bee dance, basically, can I move off this page or is somebody still using it? Yes, by all means, take a picture because it's so beautiful. Ooh. I did such a good job. Yes? For periods, you only need to know chemicals, right? Because that's where we left off. We just didn't do tactile, I think, is where we left off. No, we left off. We oh, okay. Well, then, as far as we went through. Okay. Can I go on to another page? Yeah. Okay. So, on to review, okay, the beehive, this is up and this is towards the sun and down is away from the sun. And if a bee dances, let's say, like this and comes around, like this and comes around and this and comes around, what that's telling them is when you get out of the hive, Wherever the sun is, wherever the sun is, let's say the sun was over here, okay? This is saying go what? Away from the sun. If the sun is here, fly the other direction, okay? So this is telling you fly, and if they had done their dance like this up, that would have meant fly towards the sun, right? If the food was right here, you could look at the angle of this, whatever angle this is, and that would be if the food was here. Let me get a different color here. And that would mean fly this way. So it's always relative to the sun you're flying. And it does, the bees do this little wiggle, wiggle, come around, wiggle, wiggle, come around. And the number of wiggles, do you remember what that would tell you? How many waggles you did was the Legs. distance. And that was species specific. And then up was just meant towards the sun and down, if they waggled down and came around, fly away from the sun. Okay? And then that was it. That was the whole chapter. Questions or concerns over that? Good. How could you get practice questions? You go on to the bulletin. Into the chapter. Good. And then don't forget. Read them, do them, love them, know them. Okay. Read them, do them, love them, know them. Okay, you're awesome. No Thank you. Do you want to do some questions? Oh, yeah. Yes. Sure. Right. Absolutely, I have them. I have them. Yeah, everybody, don't say that. You're ready. Don't worry. I'll just do this. Hey, we got to get our. Let's get this streak up, okay, guys? Yeah. This is for period zeal. 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 And then I see you. Heads. Are you ready? No. No. No, nobody's in. Oh, B, go in as whatever. I don't even care. Go in as something fun, Man. something you want to be. You're two, two people in a stand. Not Here, I'm pausing you. Okay, here we go. Ready?
Three. Yep. Let's see. Wow. Okay. Let's check them. Um, behavior related to defending a particular area, territory. Okay, look at me. Look at me. Altruism isn't about defending a territory against somebody in your species. Altruism is a decrease of your what? Reproductive your reproductive success. success. It's not about defending a territory, which is used for <coughs> feeding and mating and caring for your young. Okay? Um, number two, chemical oh. substance secreted. Uh, yeah, that's a pheromone. One person put imprinting. No. It's a chemical substance. I don't know um, that you're trying to influence the behavior. That was one of the ones we used as an exa example. I wouldn't put that as imprinting. Okay, social interaction that benefits others but has the potential to decrease the life, time, reproductive success. That sounds very much like altruism to me. It has nothing to do with imprinting or communication. Okay, so when you look at all these words, these would be good words to know, right? Because these are words I might ask you about. So make sure you know all these definitions. Um, most of you got this. <coughs> communication, two of you said associative learning, no. Because the operative word here is signal by a sender. It's sending a signal. That's not always true for associative learning. What type of communication is a bee dance? Tactile, one person put chemical. No, they don't secrete a chemical when they're dancing. All right, so know those words. Okay, you guys, be familiar with all of those words. Those were possibly uh, terms that you did, right? You're so review reading. your terms, do your additional objectives, <coughs> review, Wait, and, and make good choices. And, whoops, and love you very much. You